A confounding variable is an outside factor that affects both the variable that's being changed or controlled, known as the independent variable, and the variable being measured, known as the dependent variable. This outside factor can make it hard to determine if the changes in the dependent variable are truly caused by the independent variable or by something else. A confounding variable creates confusion in understanding the true relationship between variables. Here's an example of a confounding variable. Imagine a study that tries to find out if studying longer hours improves students' test scores. In this case, the independent variable is the number of hours students spend studying, and the dependent variable is their test scores. The researchers might find that students who study more hours tend to score higher on tests. However, there could be a confounding variable. Like prior knowledge of the subject, students who already know the material might spend less time studying because they don't need to review as much, while students with less knowledge might study longer. In this case, prior knowledge affects both the time spent studying and the test scores, making it difficult to know if longer study hours really lead to better scores or if prior knowledge is driving the results. Here we can see that confounding variables are important because they can lead to inaccurate conclusions. If a researcher doesn't account for these variables, they might think that there's a direct relationship between the independent and dependent variables, when in fact something else is influencing the outcome. For example, if the researchers ignore the fact that prior knowledge affects both study time and test scores, they might incorrectly conclude that studying longer hours always leads to better scores. In reality, students' prior knowledge could be the reason they're scoring higher. Researchers have ways to deal with confounding variables to make their results more reliable. One way is by using randomization, where participants are randomly assigned to different groups. This helps spread out any confounding factors across groups evenly, so they don't disproportionately affect the results. Another method is matching, where researchers make sure participants in different groups are similar in certain ways. For example, they could match students based on their prior knowledge levels. This way, they can be more confident that any differences in test scores are due to the number of study hours, not prior knowledge. A third method is using statistical controls, where researchers measure potential confounding variables like prior knowledge and include them in their analysis. By doing this, they can see if prior knowledge, rather than study time, is influencing the test scores. If you need to write about confounding variables for school or university, I recommend reading my full article that you can find in the pinned comment. To learn about independent and dependent variables, watch this video next.